Hey everybody, uh, Nick Omelet and Ryan Ovenden here with Pinnacle Wealth, and we just want to talk a little bit about uh, Secure Act 2.0. Recently, we sent out some information. Um, Jamie Hopkins, our partner from Carson Group down in Omaha, uh, did a, a whole webinar on Secure Act 2.0, uh, did an absolutely incredible job. Uh, he's, he's brilliant. Uh, he, he reads these things inside and out and just had some awesome tidbits on, on how Secure Act 2.0 uh, will impact all of us in some way, shape, or form. But Ryan and I uh, wanted to take a chance today just to kind of talk to you guys about some highlights that we took uh, from Secure Act 2.0. Um, kind of talk about them in broad level and then kind of guide you back to that webinar with Jamie if there's some additional information that you want or uh, to set up a time so we can talk through these further. Uh, but without further ado, Ryan, let's uh, let's give some highlights. Yeah, so we're going to give you five highlights quick. The first is on r and There have been a number of changes. We, again, would suggest that you go back and listen to the full Jamie Hopkins presentation, but these are some bullet points. Uh, first on RMDs, the RMD, uh, RMD amounts are going to change and the years are going to change. So in 2022, they're still, still going to be the same. You have to take an RMD on the year that you turn 72 and a half. So if you turn 72 and a half in 2022, you still have to take your RMDs. After that, for the next 10 years, RMDs have uh, increased their age until 73. And starting in the year 2033, you will not have to take an RMD until age 75. So that's one of the major changes in this act. I'd say that was a good highlight and that the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree yeah. with uh, the sports highlights and financial highlights. You know, Absolutely. You open and boys know what to do. That's right. So, wow. One of the big ones for me, um, honestly, was this 529 to Roth rollover that you can now do. Um, we talked to a lot of people about 529s in terms of college funding uh, for kids or grandkids. And one of the, one of the big downfalls uh, there's always been with 529s is the ability that they have to be used for education or you're looking at, at taxes and penalties and, and things like that. Well, what they've done now through Secure Act 2.0 is actually giving you an option to roll that into a Roth IRA. Obviously, like everything, there's there's rules around it. So one, uh, the account to have has to have been open for 15 years. Um, so that's, you know, a, kind of a kick in the pants to say, let's get this thing started. If we're talking about a 529, Let's get it started because the account has to have been open for 15 years. It's got to be a like-to-like -like beneficiary. So if the, be the beneficiary on the 529 has to be uh, the name that's on the Roth IRA, so you can't be making swaps uh, from one beneficiary to another beneficiary on the, on the Roth. Um, and then they've limited it to $35,000 max. Um, but it's better, it's better than nothing. Um, to get the money in there, it is subject to the annual Roth contribution limits, whatever those would be uh, in the year that you're trying to do the, the rollover. But that's huge. I mean, to be able to take uh, money that's, that's left over in a 529 that maybe the kids didn't use, their options before were to maybe change the, change the beneficiary on the 529 or, or hold on to it and, and hope that maybe you can use it for grandkids or, or say, well, I guess we're gonna we're gonna take the hit and we'll we'll take the cash out and pay the penalty and, and it is what it is. So just to have that option on the table, I think to me it was one of the ones that jumped off the page as a huge huge highlight. And and just for clarity, if this is not gonna be a great opportunity to to overfund a 529 right. and and get a whole bunch of money into Roth IRAs for your kids, yeah. it's really more of an opportunity to add some flexibility to 529s. Which frankly, I I did not have been a huge 529 fan since they came out because of the stipulations that and, and the penalties uh, for not pulling dollars out in the way that they're required. And so really they're just expanding the rules and making them more flexible. So it is improving a, a 529, uh, a 529's use as a tool for not only education planning, but uh, to be able to use it in a tax efficient way after if you don't use all of it. Yep. Uh, the, set, the third area is starter 401ks. We don't know a lot about these yet, and so there's a lot of clarity that we, uh, we need to see first. Uh, but the, the government is allowing some cheaper, more cost-effective starter 401ks for small businesses. So small businesses typically have had to use a simple IRA or a SEP IRA just to have an affordable plan for their employees. Uh, these new starter 401ks look like they're going to be a really good option. More news on that uh, in the future. Yep. The, the next one for me, um, they now there's a provision in the Secure Act 2.0 that'll allow you to use a QCD, which is basically a qualified distribution from your your qualified plan, so your, your traditional IRA, uh, things like that. So as opposed to taking an RMD and paying tax on those, 
What they've allowed you to do in the past is gift it directly to a, a 501c3 charity. What they're going to allow you to do now is, is one time you can do a $50,000 distribution to a split interest account like a charitable remainder trust or a charitable remainder annuity trust, uh, something like that where you can take an income stream back and, and leave the remainder to a charity. Um, there's some, some planning tools and giving tools in there that, that we could talk through further. Uh, but previously you weren't able to use QCDs to fund accounts like that and now, now they're going to allow you to do that on a one-time basis at the level of $50,000. So that'll be an interesting planning opportunity uh, for, for people to look at as well. Yeah, and the final thing that uh, is a major change is employer plans. There are a number of small provisional changes uh, in this act that are gonna change the way your 401k looks. Uh, Roth, you're, you can now uh, ask for your match on your employer match to be uh, put into your Roth. Uh, in the past, it's, it's been required that those dollars go into the pre-tax version of your 401k. So now you can ask for those to go into the Roth. So that's one thing to consider as you're starting the new year is making some uh, changes as your 401k allows. We're not sure exactly uh, when your individual company is going to allow those provisions to change, but I, I would check with your HR directors and make sure that uh, you're taking advantage of that and making sure that you're um, intentional about which dollars are going into pre-tax funds and which dollars are going into post-tax funds. Uh, another issue is uh, RMDs. There's, there's uh, not going to be an RMD required out of your Roth 401ks any longer. Uh, Nick, do you want to cover the last couple? Yeah, that's fine. So the, the catch-up contributions, um, oftentimes once you hit over 50, you're able to make catch-up contributions into your qualified plans. Um, if you make over $145,000, those are now required to be Roth. Uh, as opposed to, to pre-tax dollars. That was an interesting change that they made. Um, and then also they're gonna allow uh, Roth options inside your simples and your SEPs. Uh, some of your some of your smaller smaller entity uh, employer employer plans. So uh, that's a neat change as well. Previously that wasn't an option to have Roth uh, in those accounts. So the fact that you can do that now uh, again I think is a great great opportunity for a lot of people. So really at, at the at its core they're encouraging people to try to save more. I, I think is what is what the overarching theme of, of Secure 2.0 is. Um, so again, some some interesting changes, some interesting things to to plan around. Um, again, Jamie Hopkins, in our estimation, did a really good job uh, with the webinar, webinar. So we are going to link that again here. Uh, if you have questions about how these things pertain to your situation in particular, please don't hesitate to reach out. Again, it's it's new. We're all kind of learning as we as we go here, uh, but we're always happy to, to ask the questions, do the homework, and, and figure out how these, these changes impact your, uh, your particular situation. So uh, have a great rest of the day, and we'll look forward to connecting with all of you soon.